Hey, I'm live. Hey, everybody. This is Whitney Sparks coming at you live on Hi John the Conquer Day. Happy Hoodoo Heritage Month. It's October 15th, 2020. And I'm super energized and I just want to talk to you why it's so important to for us to rematriate and what it means to rematriate. This video might be kind of long. I typed up my notes for this and I realized I was like, wow, that's like a thorough essay. Hey, somebody's watching. Um, yeah. And so I first want to say a big shout out to Fire Angelou, Fire Angel. I will definitely be dropping her Patreon in the comments for the conversation that we had that just like inspired me. And I just love the way she's holding space for Black mothers right now. It's some powerful stuff, especially, for example, Hoodoo Heritage Month. Um, I'm also trying this month to do posts for gratitude, just a shout out. These amazing Black mothers and Black women um, and Black mages, I'm all about supporting Black mages all the time, but that's also because they're supporting me all the time. And I just want to recognize that, especially during Hoodoo Heritage Month, because this hoodoo is just almost, it's just it, it's just lit. This is our, it's just the story of our diaspora. And now I'm waiting. For the, I'm sorry, the internet is a little shoddy, but hopefully we'll keep it rolling. This is all about motherhood. I'm mothering now, my kids using the potty, thank goodness. Um, yeah, so, but, and also, you know, gratitude is just very powerful. I don't think that people recognize the power of gratitude for what it really means. Like when we say, and like for what it all encompasses, it's not just kind of this like low key bragging about like what you're, you know, what's going on. But when we talk about don't paying attention, not paying attention to other people's judgments and, you know, staying focused and doing what you do because you care about it, not because of what other people think, is because we know that people's judgments have a certain power. When we talk about citing our sources and you know, giving credit where credit is due is because we know it's important that gratitude, that spirit of respect is, is powerful. And, and gratitude is all about that. That's all the power of gratitude. Like disrespect, the ultimate nature of disrespect is just a lack of gratitude, pure and simple. So I've been trying to, you know, I'm always trying to practice that, but I'm always trying to get better at that. So um, yeah, just shout out to the coven and to the Blitzes Everywhere, Apple Mystic, Mambo Liz, Reach to Terra, Joy, Tabernacle, all you guys and your teachers and your lineage, lineage strengthen me. And I appreciate that so that I can strengthen my community as well. And just at the end of the day, it's all about Black motherhood, that Black native spirit. Okay, so yeah. But speaking of Coven, you know, something that was mentioned this week is that these witch hunts did not happen for no reason. Hey, I need you to put your underwear on, please. I can't. You have to. We just talked about this. We don't want your naked butt on the video. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're right out there. Oh, your swim shorts. Put your swim shorts on. That's right. Anyway, right. So, yeah, they didn't happen for no reason. Why, 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 why the witch hunts? Because of, right. So, yeah, they didn't happen for no reason. Why, 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 why the witch hunts? Because of the patriarchy. So trigger warning now for patriarchy, birth, sex, rape, violence, colonization, homophobia, the whole nine, because it all happened in historically, and I'm going to touch on it, and I just want to let y'all know, trigger warning, trigger warning. I probably, you know, and also um, health issues, whatever, probably won't go too deep, but just in case, you know, you're sensitive, here's the warning for that. So, um, yeah, you know, witch hunts happened all around the world, and they happened based on a specific time, and I need you to get your swim shorts in the laundry pile right there. Or you can put on some underwear. Um, because birth, the process of physical birth, of giving birth for people with uteruses was once upon a time a whole ceremony. It was always a ceremony every time that was happening. A ceremony with which, you know, other people with uteruses would gather to support each other. 
And why do I say people, you know, attribute to cis womanness? Um, it wasn't even really invented yet. Like at first we were just people. And the idea that there is a gender binary um, or only two gender, genders is not indigenous to anywhere. It's completely constructed for dominance by the cis heteropatriarchy um, and people who call themselves men, what we would call them cis men. Perfect, you found it, put them on. Um, gender is fluid. It is fluid and we were people, we are people. And um, yeah, so this whole idea of like woman versus man, um, you know, that it's just, you know, it's an invention and it was made for control of our spirits. Um, all of our spirits also as cis people, not just for, you know, not just to I put it on. enact genocide against trans I and gender informing on. people. Good job. Just like racism and anti-blackness. <laughs> They're invented for a reason. So people with beep with dicks, basically, um, <laughs> got upset and jealous about the ceremony and the power of birth. I'm going to have to ask you to leave if you scream. You can sit here and be quiet. I'm talking about something that's important, and you can either listen, or you can go have your snack, or you can go finish cleaning your room. It's on the table with some water. So, because they, you know, they saw this ceremony and the powerful transformation that was happening. It's not just a baby giving birth, coming out into the world in a new sphere, but it's also the creation. You're going to be in trouble. Okay then. It was a whole ceremony, you know, she comes out of it more empowered as a mother and also by the experience, you know, this is a celebration of the roots of life. And you have to imagine that people who were not participating in the ceremony got jealous and, you know, they couldn't take it. And no matter how much they, you know, tried to invent their own ceremonies or proxies or whatever, they never had that same power and transformation. And so instead, they began a plot to destroy and take away the power of what I call, and a lot of people call, the divine feminine. Is it only just for cis women? No, it is not. Um, but, you know, things like, um, and they attempted to destroy it. Now, here's a question. Did all men do this? There's got to be yeah. some guys who, like, you know, supported their woman or their people or whatever who didn't participate in it. It's interesting, but again, the binary was created by the dicks who called themselves men. So, and they called all uterus carriers women and denied the existence of others, also sought to exterminate them, which is continuing to this day. So it is kind of by default all cis men because that's the definition they gave themselves, just like with white people. Like all people who identify as oppressors, of course, are a part of the oppressive system. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You have to go. Go do something else. Oh. Um, yes, so whiteness is also an invention by the hegemonic class who continue to call themselves white and try to impose a so-called superiority, which is really just senseless destruction and a constant exploitation and violence against the planet Earth and all of its inhabitants. Again, I mean, basically white people treat the white people also like shit, but it's also because it's based on this hierarchy that they set up to exploit especially black people and indigenous and also happy coming out day even if you're not out you're still valid um and happy day of the girl because girl power yes you know it's positive to be feminine all that's happening right now along with hoodoo heritage month this upcoming big 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 ass witches celebration known as halloween it's a powerful time and that's why i wanted to talk to you about this history that's why it's important for you to listen all right, um, so witches were and are people with uteruses and others, mages, which is a shorthand for marginalized gender. That includes all of us, I always say this, but trans people, all women, including the cis, gender non-conforming non people. And as far as witches go, like what I'm calling witches and how I identify witches, people who practice indigenous and ancestral, magical and or spiritual and or religious, if you want tradition. Side note on religion. I don't do organized religion. I don't call my practice organized religion, and that is no disrespect. If you do, and I understand there are reasons why we must reclaim religion, especially as hoodoos and practicers of African traditional religion. I get that because um, 
our practices mm-hmm. have been seen as less than, you know, the hegemonic biggies like Christianity and such. And that's, that's not appropriate. Um, however, I take issue with all organized religion mm-hmm. by and large because I believe that the numinous and the holy and the spiritual is in- inherently mm-hmm. wild, wild, wild as fuck, super mm-hmm. wild. And it may be noble and harnessable to a certain extent, but ultimately it's vast beyond any human perception as a whole, in my belief. And the idea of organized religion and my observation of multiple religions, not just Abrahamic religions, not just Christianity, um, it attempts dog try to control and fit all of that wild infinite juicy the issue with that is not only artificially limiting i mean because you can't really limit the powerful um the universe but it's much worse in that it limits access of that divine universal source of empowerment to other human beings and i don't think that's right i think this divine universal empowerment energy is for everyone and i don't think I mean, I think there's been a lot of disrespect and that's, I understand why there has to be gatekeeping, but I just don't, I just have an aversion to the idea of an organized religion because of that. I think it's a limiting process for something that is now. Please stop touching me. I don't want to say it again. You can sit over there. You can sit down there. Please stop. I'm trying to do something. You need to respect that. There are also many other scientific and or medicinal traditional practices that are important to reclaim as both super valuable and helpful today and also that have been ridiculously or recalculously uh, demonized by the hegemonic white cis hetero. So birth, birth is so freaking huge. <laughs> Motherhood has I lagged. Wanna... Yeah. Yeah. Motherhood has radicalized me more than anything. <laughs> You can go have your snack or do something else. I'm busy right now. We're going to go to the pool when I'm done. I'm not doing that. It takes your time. (laughs) It takes your energy. It takes your body. There's nothing like it, right? If you're a mom, you already know. So why am I talking about rematriating? Because motherhood is not meant to be done alone. And the idea of rematriation is the idea of restoring the community and the support systems that is required to to be a mother and to produce, you know, healthy and happy children. Um, right. So, and it begins with birth, right? The ceremony of birth. What is the birth? What is the birth like now? Uh, birth under patriarchy. They are trying to turn it into debt. You know, around the world and in um, developed nations, more and more you see this issue with maternal uh, and infant mortality, especially, of course, among Black and Indigenous people and Black and Indigenous birth givers. This is, of course, not by accident. That's an extension of the colonization, which is an extension of this patriarchy that I'm talking about. How do they do this? How do they try to transform birth into death? By disconnecting birthing people from the sources of... (laughs) our power (laughs) connection itself spiritual practices knowledge like science witch hunts have happened from way back in until now because the patriarchy and patriarchal forces could not allow us to retain our power and wisdom and knowledge or time. Because these are a threat to their power and control of all natural resources from water to land to labor. Every time some motherfucker retold another story of how they or some other white man raped and murdered another powerful and threatening woman, he, the re- and he, the retailer, the messenger of patriarchal violence, was not punched in the face or kneed in the balls, was a mistake. Every time some motherfucker stuck his thing up inside some woman to knock her up and control her life and retold that story, like, oh, yeah, I have so many kids, da, 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 it's not taking care of them, and doesn't get punched in the face or kneed in the balls, that's a mistake. That's how patriarchy is taking our power. 
Even so, of course, our power of being synonymous with life is indestructible. The more in touch with it we are and become through introspection and connection with nature, trusting our intuition and connecting with our sisters and hoods and like, you know, sibling hoods in these covens, especially through, for example, hoodoo, um, the more power we gain and the more we commune and are able to safely and respectfully share with each other as black and indigenous mages and birth givers, especially, the more we can take back and reclaim sovereignty and stewardship stewardship for the earth and her people. But yeah, as I was saying, knocking up women absolutely can be a way of trying to kill a person and or her spirit slowly. It's an ugly truth and I think we have to keep talking about it. Yes, birth used to be a ceremony of power and transformation for people with universes and that's ha still how it is ingrained in our body, the revolution. But that pregnancy and birth is a transition to a higher community and spiritual echelon. This is why the power to choose whether to give birth has always been between the life carrier and the earth and its plants and its medicine. We've always had the power to abort or choose whether or not we wanna become mothers. The fact that uh, men, cis men and the patriarchy are trying to take that away more and more, that is the worst it is, it is for us because they're trying to control and take away uh, our power, our sovereign power over our, our entire bodies and our whole lives, not just that one instant or that one child. A person who decides to give birth to a baby is ready for powerful and uplifting transformation. But so often that's not what she gets at first or potentially possibly even ever. Whether that will happen or not is not so much dependent on just her as an individual or whether or not she's married is dependent upon the community. Once you are a mother, so much happens. Motherhood in the modern, modern conception is quite literally an impossible task. I would go so far as to call it in the case of black and brown mothers, particularly solo parents like myself, a type of indentured servitude. We are producing bodies that the patriarchal system expects to be able to take and use their labor excuse me, and their lives to exploit and also to exploit us in the process and to deny us um, the stewardship and sovereignty and protection of the land. It is a completely depletative process that they are causing us to labor in um, that we, we do not consent to. It's, it's against nature, but it's by their design. When you're a mother, your body hosts at least two people and that does not end after pregnancy. You produce food from your, from your body or not, but it is expected that you do produce food in some way to sustain both your child and your own energy to work and care for that child at, minim at minimum. Go eat your snack, for example. Your attitude and personality are expected to change and they will, but those changes may or may not meet or even come close to the expectation. Your hair, teeth, belly, boobs, skin, bones, mood, sexuality, and more are all subject to potentially absolutely drastic change and change most often not in a way that society will celebrate or appreciate. You are way more likely to have known what was coming with your first period than any of this information about postpartum. So it's not only multiple huge changes, it's multiple huge transitions with extremely limited information that you're facing with motherhood, especially solo parenthood. Also because the information you get is likely as, is as likely as not to be false. This is an understudy field, period. And indigenous knowledge is always, let alone black indigenous knowledge, always undervalued, under-researched, and under-disseminated. But we're working on that. Um, so the information you receive may not also just might not be true for you and your body. And that doesn't matter the source you get it from, be it your doctor, you know, it's more likely to be accurate if it's from your midwife, but you know, your cousin could say something and it might be even more true than what you heard from your white cis male doctor, might not know. Um, but you know what this all requires, this motherhood, you know what a person and body needs when going through multiple life changes, life changing changes, <laughs> at once while supporting a new life in addition to their own, it demands support. 
support. And do you know what the patriarchy is all about and does? It takes away that support and any support it can possibly confiscate that you need, that one would need to mother. And this is why rematriation is so important. Rematriation is about reclaiming that money, an emotionally intelligent partner, most likely, because all of us are damaged living under patriarchy, but especially um, cis men, who may be the people who were partnered with or who impregnated us. Time. For example, right now, I'm trying to reclaim some time and I got this background noise and, you know, all the judgments of people out there who are like, what are you doing? Partner with available time to help. So that's talking about um, having living wages and uh, family time leave for also for fatherhood leave as well as motherhood leave. Food growing outside your door. A lot of times, even if it's your own front yard, you can't even grow food there. Access to natural and wild places to go to rest and restore yourself. Increasingly not. Connection to your ancestors and their traditional beliefs and practices and ceremonies, especially with motherhood. A lot of that has been stolen by colonization. Uh, language, to talk about what we're speaking. Not only our indigenous languages, because that's huge, but also just the way we talk about motherhood is not conducive to what we need so much on our plates ancestral medicines of all types all including plants and fungi self-esteem appreciation for our bodies no matter what shape or size or color or changes they go through clean water clean air stable housing a village mocambo or and or affordable and safe child care Quality education and info that been inspiring for you. And if so, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to put um, my Patreon, my website, where you can find more about me. And um, yes. And also shout out to Faya for inspiring this little cursory lesson. And I hope you have a great day. Dare to protect Black mothers today.